So what I'm working on is um, a trip. So what I loved about APAC and why APAC is so effective is that APAC would take members of Congress, future members of Congress, and influential people in the community to Israel so they could see it through their own eyes. They would also meet with members of the Palestinian Authority so they could talk to everyone and like form their own opinion. But here you're going to the place that you're expected to vote on with you, yeah. you know, because you vote on foreign policy issues. Therefore, you have to be educated. Let's bring you there. Mm. And then they brought people. So the most beautiful about that trip was uh, they brought um, African-American like a specific trip for African Americans, so relating how Israel's story to the African American community, a separate trip for Hispanics, LGBTQ community. It was just like didn't like all these different. Doesn't matter what your background was. It was mm -hmm. how do we share our story with you and find commonality? And then they would come back from the trip. And what they would end up doing was that they would build events with each other. And now the Jewish community and the non-Jewish community, because like APAC is for Jews and non-Jews, because there's a huge evangelical community. There's a huge, just everyone's in that, in this tent. But anyways, they would have events where it'd be the APAC community and the African-American community. So like, how do we support you with what you're doing? How do you support us with what we're doing? So we built bridges, right? So mm -hmm. we understood each other, which is beautiful. I'm trying to do something similar where I'm bringing influencers to Israel and Poland so they can see hmm. it with their own eyes so they can understand anti-semitism as best as one can understand anti-semitism hmm. and then one more entrepreneurs obviously like a mastermind get to connect with each other which is just beautiful that should be happening but then you come back to your hometown and then we are able to then um help you with what you're working on you're able to help us with what we're working on because it's not an if it's a when there will be another time where there will be unfortunately a war and this person mm -hmm. might have to speak out again if that person says the wrong thing again i gotta make sure that mm -hmm. person's educated mm -hmm. yeah because yeah. so let's so let's make sure that you don't say the wrong thing so that's a whole idea how do i bring you to these areas how do you get to see it how do you get to see what our story is and how it relates to your story and we can build mm -hmm. bridges together and then that that is a way of bringing not only educating influencers to talk about the current issues that they're facing, but when those people end up running for Congress, they're already educated on this issue. Yeah. And so it's even easier to then have a real conversation with them about facts versus having to start over for like, this is what this is. And now tomorrow yeah. you have to go vote on that issue when you had one day of education. That's what happens. Yeah. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. No, I remember uh, when I was in college, my senior year, and this is one of the greatest gifts I ever had was um, we had a professor who took us to a Harvard national model united nations uh, which is essentially where we all pretend to be the united nations and mm -hmm. i was in college at a very small christian university uh like there were a hundred people in my graduating class a couple hundred people in my graduating class very small and you know we would have all these conversations and i had no real sense of like you know i was like i was whatever smart within my group but i had no idea of you know comparing so when we went to these big schools it was this gift because I was giving speeches in front of like Harvard students and Yale students and working on creating laws with these people. I was like, oh, I'm like as good as all these people. This was like, so that was like a really, you know, light bulb moment for me. Um, but, you know, one of the things I realized when I was there was like, there is so much happening, like this law gets made that has zillions of things in it that no one yeah. is able to fully read. And they're voting on it with this timeline and all of these things. And it's like, what in the world like there's just there's it just like almost doesn't make sense uh as a way of like creating a law because there's there's not any way for us to really you know know and I, and there's such an, an encouragement to also be active in a creating a law around something that doesn't actually let's say matter to you right yeah like if i'm if i'm in a country and it's like we're voting on this issue that really doesn't impact me and my country at all i might still become involved because it's just like well i'm there <laughs> yeah. right and it's like really what i should be probably doing is just abstaining and like allowing the people who actually like it really matters to to like actually deal with it and come up with a solution yeah why and this i think we'll circle back to i know a, a great story that you have why israel and poland like why do you want to take them to those two places so israel because you need to understand the history of the region and the surrounding region and the threats to Israel, mm. also the politics around it, right? So it's like <laughs> when you talk about two state versus one state versus now a three state, because there's there's so much nuance that we won't have time to get into. But mm. 
you need to understand if you're going to vote on it, you need to understand what's actually happening. Because when you hear someone say like, oh, why isn't there a two state solution? First off, you know, first off, the conversation that's not being said was like two states with who? Because you mm-hmm. have Israel and then you have Palestinians, with their, which are a subset of Arabs. And then Arabs, you have Shiite and, and, and Sunni. So there's all these different like groups inside of it. So like it's not like you're <laughs> you're not just having two people, two parties agree. There's so many thousands of years of history. So it's like. You need to understand that. And then you also need to recognize how small Israel is. And also I want them to to understand how uh, like your phone is made from Israeli technology, right? So mm-hmm. a lot of the cures that we have came from uh, Israel because they share. <clears throat> a lot of what APAC does is lobby for strategic cooperation. So what Israel develops, the US provides funding for, and then Israel shares. So like California, their drought is helped being solved because of water irrigation from Israel. Israel's figured out a way to recycle water. So there's no drought. Israel's a desert. Right. Created into a beautiful country. That's just on like, hey, influencer, here's how this is literally impacting your life right now. You're driving. Oh, you use Waze. That's Israeli. Oh, your computer. That's Israeli technology. Your phone. Blah, blah, mm. blah. Like, here's yeah. how the modern days. And it's it's just to show that our countries are so intertwined together. And here's how it's helping our lives. Mm. Poland, because of the Holocaust. And you need to just understand that story because what happened to the Jews uh, is unfortunately happening to other groups. And the idea is that those other groups are maybe not as always represented in regards to their genocide that they're going through. So it's mm-hmm. not just like, look at what happened to the Jews, but it's like, this is what happens when genocide takes place. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it's it's a very, it's a place of genocide that you can still go to and like see it. There's genocide mm-hmm. that happens all over the place, but there's, unfortunately there's those places harder to go, <clears throat> go to that's safe. Here you can actually see like the camps. Yeah. So because of that, they need it's it's not you're not just educating them on like why this happened but it's also like how when good people do nothing but more importantly say nothing and never speak up this is what could happen so it's a lesson of saying neutral is still evil Mm -hmm. you have to be educated so you can speak out against hate and so you know how to speak out against hate and um showing them just like what six million people that were wiped out of the earth like what that experience was like and how that happened Uh, and then how we can help stop obviously genocides that are happening to other people right now